management for the protection of water resources was a project devised to meet the needs and aspirations of society by delivering safe drinking water, food production and a healthy environment. The project used two catchments, the River Thurn in Norfolk and the River Tamar in Cornwall, around which this film is based. Well, the problem we've been working on is water quality and diffuse pollution, which is pollution from a variety of sources within the rural landscape. And the solutions depend on working with local stakeholders. It's about how you manage land, it's about how you manage water, it's about how you manage roads and ditches, it's about how rural residents manage septic tanks. But the problem is complex. And we first started to meet stakeholders in these two catchments, it became quite clear that the data wasn't in a format that could be readily understood by stakeholders. So the first step in our research was to um, present a, a simple report card which contained some um, numerical information and so also some annotation to explain some of the water quality um, parameters and the status of the, the water courses. And that was quite uh, successful. It helped people discuss issues surrounding water quality. And then that led us on to thinking about using a, a more uh, developed tool the modelling process we developed is innovative in itself, but it has to be seen in the wider context of the wider project, which was about collaborative and adaptive catchment management. And the modelling was, in a sense, just a tool to facilitate that, but um, we would argue quite, a, uh, quite an important one, because it brought together people's different perspectives, it became a collaborative learning tool. You know, each one of those, 10% increase would cost this. Also, the way we dealt with the uncertainties, I think that's also, from, from, from a very technical perspective, I think that's also quite an innovation. We have been talking a lot about uncertainties and models from a scientific perspective, but not many people have actually taken this uh, to actual applications, like, like we've done. The farming community we talked to, they really appreciate it uh, that we took account of uncertainties which they basically see every day so it's something they can really relate to. Certainly in the Tamar I would say the local stakeholders were a tough crowd uh, to start with. Alex Inman who is part of our team um, has, is from the area, he knows the area very well, he knows many of the people in the farming community and, and the rural community more widely but he has skills as a professional facilitator so it was very important to have somebody like that to, prov to, to act as an intermediary. For a long time I've felt that there is a need for a, a, a tool that can enable people with relatively limited knowledge of natural systems, enable those people to understand those systems and be able to start understanding the trade-offs um, that we might need to make as a society. Alex said that he was wanting to have a, an opinion from a good cross-section of interested parties and that's what really made me think it might be worth the effort of, of going to the meetings. The complexity and inevitable trade-offs of catchment management necessitate an adaptive management cycle, collaboration between agencies and stakeholder engagement supported by targeted scientific research. After that first introductory meeting we had with the farmers when you showed them the model, I went to see a few of them afterwards and they were basically very happy with it. With it. They were saying we really need to understand um, what we can do by changing our land management mm. practices. The model doesn't do that. So I think the turning point is when I came back and told you this and um, you kind of uh, thought it'd be possible to incorporate that and you went away and did it. And it had so much more credibility then because it had this local knowledge built in as well. All that gave them ownership over it. Mm. It also gave the model a level of practicality for them. But we all given as much as time as we wanted to, 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 to put in different scenarios as to what could happen and you immediately could see the, the results of doing that. I think the, um, the thing that the West Country Rivers Trust get from the project is uh, a tool we can use uh, to identify what the benefits of our sort of approach is um, to the wider catchment. We started as individual groups of stakeholders or experts or whatever you'd like to call us and gradually we've learned each other's language and each other's priorities and learned to understand each other's businesses. And from that we've been able to come up with some really great collaborative outcomes. We've always heard the farmers wanting proof that doing something differently will improve the water quality and this is one way of doing it. The problems that you know, we have 
in catchments can only be solved really through a community engagement, sharing of knowledge, understanding of the catchment. Um, it's with that shared understanding that you can find um, solutions that are, well, that people, you know, can, can all buy into. Uh, the government has um, introduced recently what they're calling the catchment management approach and they're, they're encouraging a more catchment scale and more partnership and community-based approach to catchment management than has existed in the past. Um, so we're trying to feed lessons into that policy development because we think it's, it's very much the direction in which things should be moving. It made me look at my science again in a different light to hear the questions that matter to other people and I thought well if those are the questions then I must um, con you know, arrange my research to help answer those questions so it's helped me inform my own um, research agenda. Mm -hmm.